First of all, on behalf of Cardiff Trades Council, can I thank everybody who's made the effort to come. We can never promise you the weather at our events. It's either peeing down with rain or the sun is out. But that, I'm afraid, is the way of climate change that we all have to get used to. My own unionist captain says the PCS is also now balloting for industrial action in September. And in doing so, we will be joining the throngs of other trade unions who are absolutely sick and tired of being on the receiving end of Tory greed. Our members have not paid, had a pay rise of for 10 years. And we have the irony where members in Catherine's section, the DWP, who are responsible for administering benefits, are also claiming them because of the levels of poverty. And if that isn't enough, we have the parting shot from Boris Johnston telling us that we're a waste of space. One in five of your jobs needs to go. And that comment, that comment alone reveals what all these strikes are really about. The Tories and their system hate. They hate the organized working class. And if you don't believe me, I know you've heard it on the radio recently, Liz Trust, in a, a meeting she did, which is meant to be secret, a couple of years ago, and by the way, if you notice, she always goes round now in a blue dress, because as far as the Tory voters are concerned, she is supposed to be the new Margaret Thatcher. Uh, we'll see about that. In that speech, she came. She described the British workers as degenerate and as completely as degenerate and completely unproductive. Is that okay? Can you hear me, all right? It always happens to me. She described British workers as unproductive and lazy. And she implied that the woes of this country is not down to her class, but down to our class. Well, let's put the record straight. The reason why Britain is unproductive is the boss's refusal to invest in new investment and technology to make us competitive. That is the real reason for it. Take for it, and I mean, at least, you know, in the days, in the days of Victorian railways, there, the dividend would not be paid out unless not only was it a profit, but reinvestment first went back into new technology. Today, it doesn't matter if these companies make a gigantic profit or a gigantic loss. The shareholders still get massive dividends and the chief executives still get massive bonuses. Take for instance, the chief executive of Birmingham International Airport. Birmingham lost huge amounts of money during the COVID. And yet a couple of months ago, he awarded himself a 49% increase which now stands at £650,000 a year. And when he was challenged on it, we were told, it's the going rate. Well, it's, our answer to that is this. If he, if the, if it, for him and his like, 49% is the going rate, then for workers, a minimum 15% inflation for pricing, £15 an hour, that's our going rate in our demands in the next period of time. And I'll tell you something else as well. We must actually we go up to Smith, dismiss the myth that inflation is caused by workers' increase. We haven't had a pay rise for 10 years, for God's sake. So how can we be responsible for inflation? The real cause of inflation is the boss's, boss's system of profits in the, for, for, their own, uh, for their own kind. And I would say, you know, the world economy is now actually controlled 
by 3,000 billionaires. That's a fact. Across the continent, 3,000 billionaires control the economy. And their greed is, is without uh, parallel. I would say never in the history of class struggle has so much been pilfered by so few against us, the many. And we say as a trade union movement, enough is enough. We've had enough for that. And whoever wins, therefore, the Tory leadership, whether it be Truss or whether it be, what's his name? Sunak, it makes no difference to us because we will carry on our struggle. And if they dare, as they go threaten, to carry out more anti-trade union laws, then the, we must demand of the TFC, they call now a 24-hour general strike to show that we mean business. <laughs> now this summer is moving into autumn. And for working class people, it's been an absolute catastrophe of a summer in terms of oil price, in terms of prices on oil, energy, in terms of uh, the water shortage, in terms of rent increases for young people, and the massive hike in food costs. And on that basis, therefore, I would say, I would say to Starmer, it's no longer good enough to say we have a price freeze. It's no longer good enough to say we have a, a one-off windfall tax. Because if we freeze those prices, the way that they get over that is they give massive millions of subsidies to the energy companies. Now, as Shabbos already said, this is the time to re-nationalize those industries lock, stock and barrel. You take, for instance, the water industry. They're now in the nerve to put on a ban on hose pipes. These are the same people, because of their obsession in giving dividends to their shareholders, have let nearly all the pipes and water systems in Britain leak. They've taken water illegally from the rivers at a low level and they continue to plough sewage into the, into the sea. On the basis of taking them over and then using those profits, not for dividends to the shareholders, but to reinvest, so we can reinvest in new technology, better energy systems, etc. The same goes, goes for the energy, for the energy uh, companies. To finish, comrades,